Hey everyone, the Collins Creatures. Today I'm at Clyde Peeling's Reptiland, and this is one of their education cane toads. The scientific name of the cane toad is Rhinella marina, and they're also known as the marine toad. And below me, I have some paper towels. That is because the, to the toad will most likely be trying to pee on me throughout at least one time this video. They are native to the Americas from the Rio Grande to down south into the Amazon and Peru. And they live in tropical and semi-tropical environments. They are a massive amphibian, getting four to nine inches in length. They are, their back is brown colored in variations of darkness, and their belly is cream colored. And across their body, they have what look like warts, but are actually poison glands, the two especially large ones behind their eyes. In the wild, they typically only live for 10 to 15 years, though in captivity, they can live to be up to 35 years old. Cane toads can excrete a very large amount of a milky white poison known as bufotoxin, which when ingested can result in hallucin hallucinations, an irritated mouth, and neurological issues. The poison can and has been fatal to many creatures, including humans. Tox significant toxicity typically occurs through ingestion and not through contact with skin. Cane toads were initially introduced to certain Caribbean islands to control pests, especially on Puerto Rico, where they were successfully used to control beetles that were eating cane sugar cane, hence the name cane toad. And this success resulted in them being advertised as a, as a successful an easy to use pest control method and were spread to other areas of the world, some having disastrous results. This is especially evident in Australia, where they have become an ecological disaster as they eat much of their wildlife and the poison prevents many animals from eating them. There are some positives as there are animals in Australia and other places that have learned to eat them without being poisoned. For instance, they are in areas where they are native, they are eaten by caimans, cat snakes, killifish, eels, and bullet ants. In areas where they are non-native, the predatory birds, the rakali, a kind of Australian semi-aquatic rodent, meat ants, and turtles have been able to successfully eat them without being poisoned. For instance, the rakali will flip them over and remove the poisonous gallbladder and then they will eat the heart and other organs, and then they will peel back the poisonous skin and eat the thigh muscles. Cane toads can tolerate extremes that most amphibians cannot, like salty water, which is maybe why they're called marine toads, as well as extreme lows and highs in temperatures. In the wild, cane toads will eat practically whatever they can catch and swallow, being invertebrates, fish, small mammals, amphibians, reptiles, and some weirder things like plants, pet food, feces, and household refuse if they're in developed areas. Despite being poisonous, cane toads are readily available as pets and I often see them at reptile shows. So let's talk about their captive care. This is Michael and he's going to be helping me talk about the captive care of the cane toads and your toad is much smaller than mine. It is. This is one of our male cane toads. He is being exceptionally better behaved than our female right now. And so for care at Clyde Peeling's Reptiland, we keep these in a very large plastic container to give them plenty of floor space, more than they probably need. And um, we keep a small group of them together and um, for a substrate we provide them with cocoa fiber and moss. It holds the humidity particularly well for them, but we also do provide them with a large water dish if they want to sit and soak in that, which they use very regularly. And if you're keeping them at home, a 24 by 18 by 12 is adequate for a single adult. And since they need it to be humid, make sure to keep the enclosure nice and humid, just don't flood the enclosure. 
Yep. So if we do we do work to keep it humid here. We give them a di twice day misting to make sure that they keep plenty of humidity inside of that moisture. We also provide them with a day night cycle and we keep them in a temperature controlled room to make sure that they do not get into any extreme heat or that it does not get too cold for the animal as hardy as they are. And the temperature can be they can be comfortably housed at 75 to 85 degrees with a warmer end closer to 85 degrees. And when it comes to feeding here, we provide them with a diverse diet. We will provide them with crickets, mealworms, superworms, occasionally with a calcium dusting to help make sure that they get plenty of that. But in addition to that, we'll also give them a monthly rodent as well as occasional fish. As you can see, we are holding the toads with our bare hands. And because they're amphibians, you want to make sure that you wash your hands before handling them so that you don't transfer anything toxic to them. But likewise, since they are a poisonous amphibian, you also want to make sure that they are, well, that you are washing your hands after working with them so that they don't get any poison on you. While it won't be absorbed through your skin, if you rub your face afterwards, such as rubbing your eye or getting it around your mouth, it can cause you harm. So just make sure you wash your hands thoroughly after handling these animals. So in summary, the cane toad is a giant amphibian, one of the biggest you can find in the pet hobby, and they're really quite cool from having two big poison glands and just being really awesome animals in general. And if you want a big amphibian, these are one of the best ones for you. So thank you, Michael, for appearing in my video and talking about the captive care of these awesome amphibians. And I'd like to thank Clyde Peeling Land for allowing me to use their education cane toads for my video. And I hope you enjoyed and learned a lot. I certainly did while researching for this video. So thanks for watching. Subscribe to my channel, like my videos, and I'll see you next time on Collins Creatures. Creatures.